I'm Marisa, brand ambassador for Brother Home Sewing and Embroidery. And today I'm super excited to show you my brand new project. It is a Christmas stocking that I made using an applique technique with Elsa from the hit movie Frozen. And I gave it a little bit of a custom snowy uh, topper here. It's very plush and I even lined it with some satin so it's a beautiful stocking i made it all using the brother anovis 990d and i used a great little applique technique that i'm excited to show you and it's super easy to do you could customize it with any of the designs that you can download and purchase on ibroidery.com or you could also make this using any of the built-in designs that come built in and preloaded on the brother anovis 990d so I'm going to show you how to do it. It's really fun, really easy, so let's get started. First thing you're going to want to do is make your paper pattern. I used an existing stocking and turned it inside out and traced it to make my paper pattern. Fold your fabric three times as shown and pin the paper pattern on top and then trim around the paper pattern. Next you're going to do the same thing using two layers of quilt batting and then you've got all your pieces prepared and cut out. Layer up a piece of quilt batting, fabric, and stabilizer and get it onto your machine. Then you're going to locate your design from either your USB, as I've done here, or from any of the built-in designs that come on the machine. For my Christmas stocking, I used one of the beautiful frozen designs of Elsa. And I went ahead and made sure that I had all of the thread colors as specified in the diagram. The first color that the machine tells me to load is white, so I load in my white thread and I go ahead and begin my machine embroidery. We are just about done with the white now and the machine is telling me to load in the sky blue color. So I simply check my thread to make sure I'm using the right color, load in my blue, and here we go. We are adding more detail to our beautiful Elsa. And now we are done with that color and the machine is telling us to load in the linen thread. So I simply load in the linen thread and we are on to the next step. Now we can see Elsa's face is beginning to take shape. She's looking really beautiful. And we are just going to continue this process following the directions that the machine gives us, changing out our thread colors as we go along. And as you can see, now the machine is filling in the details on Elsa's back. And we are now using the light yellow thread, working on her hairdo. It's looking really good. Now the machine is adding in the low lights into her beautiful braid. And as we go, we are going to just continue checking our guide to make sure we are on track with our thread colors. And now the machine is adding in the details of Elsa's beautiful dress. It looks wonderful. I love this part when the machine starts to really fill in the different areas that it's outlined. And now this is a really cool part. The machine starts to add in a sheer effect um, with Elsa's gown, which is really very beautiful, the way that you can see her hand behind what looks like sheer fabric. And now we are just about done with our design. Yep, the machine tells us when we are finished sewing our embroidered Elsa. So I'm just gonna click OK and hit the back button and delete my pattern. And I'm going to go ahead and begin the applique process by selecting a frame and then a stitch pattern. I'm gonna go with a straight stitch and adjust the size and the layout. I wanna rotate this to make sure it's oriented correctly. Now this stitch line is going to serve as a guide as to where we are going to position our applique design onto the stocking. It says that we use black, however I chose a beautiful gold color to complement the pink and purple of my stocking. 
Before stitching, I am going to just check to make sure my stitch line is positioned in the correct place, which this is a really handy feature to make sure you've got everything set up right before you begin actually stitching your border for your applique. And now we are beginning to stitch the border for the applique. And it's just going to go all the way around our Elsa. And the machine tells us when we are finished stitching our border. So next you're going to just remove that piece from the hoop, clean up your extra stitches with a small pair of scissors and a seam ripper, and then you are going to trim around the outside of that line. And then you are going to apply a little bit of dry fabric adhesive to the back of your applique piece. Next you're going to layer up the front of your stocking with a piece of stabilizer and get it onto the hoop and onto your machine. You are going to stitch the exact same frame in the exact same place on your hoop and that will give you a guide as to where to position your applique piece with the embroidered design. And now our frame is being stitched into place and this is a really handy method to do all kinds of fun applique projects. Once you've got your frame in place, you are going to adhere your applique piece with the design using the stitch lines as a guide. Then you're going to place your project back onto the machine and select a frame that is the same exact position and the same size only with a wider stitch pattern. And you're going to make sure you've got the size and the orientation correctly positioned. And I like to go ahead and use that handy feature again to check to make sure that everything is going to be stitched in the exact proper place. And now you are ready to go ahead and stitch your final applique frame pattern. I went ahead with the gold and went all the way around. And then I decided to go in and add a little more detail. I selected another embroidery frame with a dotted pattern, this time in a beautiful blue color to complement Elsa's gown. And I added just a little more detail that way. Next, you're going to remove your stabilizer and it is time to begin assembling the stocking. So you're going to pin together the layers of each side and turn off your machine and swap out the embroidery unit for your extended sewing table. And now you're ready to begin winding a bobbin of sewing thread. You're going to turn back on your machine and select a basting stitch. The machine is really handy. It tells you which presser foot you need for each different kind of stitch that you select. Then you're simply going to swap out your presser foot from the set that comes with the machine and you're ready to start stitching. You're going to stitch with a basting stitch all the way around each side of the stocking and then you're going to assemble the stocking by pinning both of those pieces together and selecting a simple straight stitch. And remember to back stitch at the beginning and the end of your stitch lines. Stitch all the way around, remembering to leave an opening at the top, of course. And once you're finished, you are going to cut little notches around the curved parts so that everything lays nice and flat once you turn it right side out. Now you're ready to begin making the little loop that is going to hang your stocking. You're simply going to sew a tube of fabric and turn it right side out with a pencil, or if you prefer, you could use a piece of ribbon for this step. Now you're ready to begin assembling the top piece of your stocking. I made a cool frozen icy pattern by folding over a piece of fleece and sewing a wavy line. Then I trimmed away the excess and filled it in with some fiber fill. Using the stocking as a guide, I measured out the size for my top piece and then I pinned everything together as shown. Then I took off the extension table from my machine and sewed all the way around the perimeter and turned it right side out. Then to give it a little extra bling, I added some glitter with some glue and some heat set rhinestones and voila, we have a beautiful custom made frozen Christmas stocking.